morning. I'd like to call this work session of the Southampton Town Board to order on this 25th day of September 2018. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, Kim, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Supervisor Schneiderman? Here. Councilwoman Lofstad? Yes. Here. Councilwoman Scalera? Here. Councilman Bouvier is running late. He'll be joining us momentarily. Councilman Skivoni? Present. All right, so let's get started. Um, our first order of business on the agenda is uh, a update of capital projects um, concerning our parks department. We have our town parks director, Kristen Dulos. Kristen, would you come forward? We have Brian Bortsfield, uh, our assistant town parks director, Mary Wilson, our CPF coordinator, Diana Weir is here, uh, director of our housing and community development. And uh, we will try to get a few others to join us as well. So. Uh, do we need to have Len before we start? Yeah, I should. Uh, probably start. That would probably be helpful. Frank was just here. He's yeah. yeah, he was here two minutes ago. Yeah, Frank. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Here's John. Yeah, I was just thinking. Your name, please, sir. My Back apologies. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> and Tommy John is. All right, can we mark John as here, Jim? Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, Deputy Supervisor Frank Sapone is is joining us, and Len will be here momentarily. Do we, can we start without Len? I think we could probably. You want to introduce it? Sure. Um, we are here to update the board on. Um, we have many projects going on right now, but there are two um, in particular that we're here to speak with you about today. The first being the Pongquag Beach. Um, Pavilion and facility rehabilitation, and the second being the hot dog beach um, uh, repair and renovation and rehabilitation. So, um, as you have all uh, been involved with over the past um, year, year and a half or so, we started Pongquag Beach with a conceptual design, and we had gone out to the community with surveys, with public sessions. Um, and incorporated a lot of their wants and needs into those plans. Um, so more recently, we've been working with uh, DMB, who did the architectural and engineering plans for the facility. We have gone out to bid. Um, we went out to bid once. We only received one general construction bid <coughs> at that time, uh, one electrical bid, and three plumbing bids. They all came in uh, much higher than anticipated. We went out, we rejected uh, those bids, all except for the plumbing, because we did um, also obtain a county contract quote for that, and it came in higher. So with that, we went with the low bidder. Um, with the general construction and electrical, we went out for a second time to bid, and they did come back um, still higher than anticipated. But better than the first but time. But better than the first time. Um, so at this time, we are hoping to still move forth with the project. Um, however, it is over um, what the anticipated budget was uh, initially. So we are looking um, to hope that the town board moves forth with supporting it at this time because we believe that if we shelf the project, um, the numbers are only going to continue to go up. Um, it is, you know. What's driving the the acceleration of the cost? Is it paving? Is it epay? Is it siding? I, is it, do we know? I think it's just the general. It, it's all of those things. You know, material costs are high. Epay is high in demand. Um, Labor is. But it's. I think the economy is very good right now, particularly for construction uh, industry. It. You know, there's been articles. Um, in Newsday recently how it's the number one booming industry right now on Long Island. They're being very selective in what they even bid on. 
So. Um, and they're coming in high, and if they don't get it, they don't get it. If they get it, they'll do it. Exactly. There's just they have so much work right now that they're able to be selective with what they're bidding on, and um, and it, so it. I don't foresee <laughs> that. And in speaking with a lot of our different um, contractors, not just the one we work with on this project. They all seem to think it's not coming down anytime soon. And in fact, with the recent storms in the Carolinas, um, next year we could be looking at even higher material costs because EPA is the recommended um, marine material by the Army Corps of right. Engineers. So sure uh, I think it's going to be even higher. To repair down in the Carolinas, yeah. It'll probably only likely be in higher demand and more costly um, heading into the next. So what are we years. talking about? We budgeted, I think, close to two million for this project. Correct. Um, we started this year with um, a, over, a little over two point one million. Um, right now, we still would need about one point one seven million to complete so the it's project. Three point two is the total. It brings the total to about three point three. Three point three. Mm -hmm. What do we budget in total already? Two point two. This year we started with two point one six nine. Um, we had spent a little bit last year on consultant fees, so I don't have the exact. I mean, originally we hoped this was a million and a half, so that. But then we upped it. Yeah, to initially two. it came in about 1.8. Then our second round of estimates, when we got to this phase of the project, was about two million, um, 2.1 million, and um, the prices just came in over what so was about anticipated. One one. one. Roughly short. Correct. So this project includes what a new booth, right? A new reception, whatever. Toll, uh, yep, the new collection. attendance booth. Attendance um, booth. Thank you. Entryway improvements. The whole parking lot is improved. Drainage is yep, placed in it, and then it's all gardens, new siding for the building, new roofing. The cupolas are kind of uh, some engineered glass work up there. Uh, doing the bathroom. And then the bathroom the showers, and then the deck is expanding by like. 30% mm -hmm. to the south, yeah. All and new decking, redoing railings. the entryway to the beach itself. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a there's a lot of parts to it. And we went higher on some of the original materials because we wanted to have environmentally friendly materials. Right. We went with the green heart piles um, because, like you said, we wanted to um, use best practices in the marine environment. Well, it's also an economy for us too. It's a Longer lasting, right? right. We're not, oh, is a sanitary system, is that being upgraded too? Not at this time. Um, okay. We do hope to do that in the future. But we're not expanding it. You know, maybe one day we'll do a IA system or something. Right. Like that. I think that was the thought. Um, um, it's also a very aggressive timeline. No matter when we do this project, we're always going to be asking a contractor to do it between Labor Day and Memorial Day. So, so, so if we add a million to the project, roughly a million. So that will add a million, the debt service on that million. You're going to add a million two. A million two to the project. Is that what the difference is? You'll have a resolution on next week if you approve it to bond an additional million two. Right. So the debt service on that will kick in probably the following year. So around 2020 is when we'll start to carry that. Yeah. What I was proposing was that we'd loan the money on a short term so we can start the work now. And then we'll borrow it in the next spring. From the general fund. Correct. And then we'll borrow, and then we'll reimburse the general fund when we get the proceeds from the bonds next, like April. And this is a, we're not doing this as a park district project. We're doing this general as fund. a general fund. Because this is everybody's speech here. So, um, well, no, no, let me rephrase that. Um, it's the parks, the beaches are in an enterprise fund. But, um, if there's a shortfall in the funding of an enterprise fund, we fund it with a transfer from the general fund. So in, in effect, you don't have to pay it back though, once you do well, that. Well, we try we try to try pay to. all all of the beach expenses with beach revenues. Right. That's the the concept. I see. All but right. sometimes they're short or not, and and we supplement it with general so fund money. So to figure out whether there's a tax impact to this. Now we might, we're already seeing more uses of our beach, right? Our beach <coughs> permits have gone up this year was a jump or no? Um, Cause I know Hot Dog Beach was packed and yeah, the open Sandbar Beach. They're oh, usually oh, fairly you know, consistent. Sell permits there. Yeah. yeah, I mean we, we sell permits and then people could use any of the facilities. So it didn't necessarily increase 
the sales of any permits, but um, hot dog was very well utilized this summer. And, but would we allow people to park by the day or no? We, we haven't done that um, at hot dog. Yeah, we're not set up for any selling of permits there um, at this time, but you know, something yeah, we Because I don't want to increase the fee that residents pay, but maybe we can look at what visitors pay tourists pay and you know make sure that that's appropriate um, if somebody let's say is staying in Hampton Bays they should be able to use the beaches in Hampton Bays they should be able to pay by the day they can have they Ponquag, can right? they can have Ponquag, Tiana uh, all of our attended beaches sell dailies except for um, Scott Cameron uh, because that's a deeded beach for residents only right. so getting back to what is the taxpayer impacts here so the debt service is on an additional million dollars, million two, right? And that would well, be... Well, the whole project we're going to borrow, it's going to be three million and change. What so was the additional debt service? And it's paid for first through park revenue. That's right? what we and if it, And that falls short, then it goes to general obligation. We'll transfer some money from the general fund to cover right. it. So, so let me ask you this question. Is that the IA system, the flow rates have been determined for that. Was that part of the original deal or not? So have you made any applications to to the CPF fund to offset those costs? Before you go in this, in this direction, I just want to kind of finish we up on the debt service. We haven't, but that was definitely talked about. Okay. It's on, I believe it's on um, Kyle Collins has like a list of um, uh, priority facilities. I'm asking questions. I'm just trying to do the additive here. So I guess. Yeah, it, it's definitely been. We, we're considering that. And yeah. We, I think we're going to do that, but it, we, you, you can't do it in this phase anyway. So we we're going to It's do a it minor amount, I think, in context of that. That's the only reason I didn't know what the. So here, here's a question I'm, I'm trying to frame. So you have, uh, we're being asked to put another million, $1.2 million into a beach pavilion. Right. Um, you know, we have lots of beach facilities. There's a policy decision under underlying this. You know, you know I, I've been saying that I, you know, Ponquag Beach to me is our flagship beach. It's, you know, I I think it's probably the you know, one of the highest use use beaches within the town. The pavilion is in really bad shape, in my estimation. It needs repair. Are we willing to, you know, to get the job done that the community, when we vetted this, wanted? Um, we have to come up with another million dollars, one point two million dollars. So it's there's a policy. We're then burdening the community with paying that debt, but it seems like it's pretty manageable. And that's really what I'm getting at, Len. I mean, between the parts. It's in our plan. It's what? It, it's in the plan, like we in our capital we, plan. In your current budget proposal. Yeah. But what? But what's the debt service difference between? I think. Well, I would think that this is about a 15-year bond. Um, so on a million two, it's probably another hundred thousand a year, maybe ninety thousand a year. What are we getting it's on the right concession out. there? Right are we now, we bid the concession. Yeah, we'll be going back out for the concession. So, so that's that could produce because now you're going to have the concession. Yeah. You know, this gorgeous pavilion. We ought to maybe get a little more out of the concession there. That's what we would expect and hope. That could offset the cost. You know, and maybe more use by visitors. We have to look at the rates we charge for the dailies. And well, we're not proposing any changes in that right now. Well, this, but the debt service doesn't kick in for another year anyway, so it wouldn't be in this budget, but maybe in a future budget. Right, it would be in the 20 budget. That 2020 would, budget. Is you would have to start to carry the debt service. So yeah, we could revisit our. When are we building this in 2019? No, now. We want to get started in October if possible. So mm -hmm. we're not going to realize any of those bond proceeds until 2020? Yeah, yeah. when you borrow money, yeah. you don't make the first payment until another year after you borrow it. But so, 2018 we're borrowing it. No, no, we're going to borrow it in the spring of 19. So we're going to use... So once if you borrow the stuff that closes in April, say, of 19, right. your first payment isn't until like January of 20. Well, we've, we've already borrowed that. We've already borrowed that debt load in the interim. We, we've already borrowed. You accrue something. interest. Oh yeah, yeah. Len, we've just already gets accrued. It just don't, you don't have to make a physical payment yeah, until the following. Then we've already borrowed some of it, haven't we? we in the two last million. Two, two million. So it's right. just the additional, right which we two so we forward is in the, is in the out of reserves the the differential so that we could award the bid, and then you yeah, the next bonus. week there's gonna if you approve it, there'll be two or three resolutions, I'm not sure how we have it. There's uh, one would be to have a bond resolution, one would be to loan the money from the general fund 
to start the project now because typically we don't like starting the projects unless we have 100 percent of the funding in place and then the third one would be to award the contracts to the various vendors i guess there might be a few of them it's a wix law project so we have to there's a few award to three different contractors so there's a bunch of resolutions if we all are agreement that have to be addressed so there's no point of this where you're, you're going out for rebid on on anything that we're talking about now correct no, it, so we're set so you simply ready to pull the trigger about the addition too all right and what's I, the I alternative if the board was not supportive nothing happens <laughs> yeah well, it's not it's not really a project that could be phased it's all or nothing yeah got it all right you could uh, potentially shrink the project you know, we have to uh, I don't, you'd have to decide what you wanted to take away. Right. Well, I think, like you said, we went There's to the community nice and the community features. Right. 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 And, you, you've yeah. got some shaded yeah. areas, some trellises. Doing the parking lot and right. entranceway yeah. and vice versa. Agreed. Yeah. You could probably do shrink it somehow, but it would be hard. And then you'd just be adding time onto the project, which is going to escalate, you know, other costs potentially as well. I have a couple of questions. The 3.3 million and the increase of, of 1.2 million, um, those are the lower lower uh, bids that we got? The lowest, yeah, the after lowest going out to bid twice. We go out to bid and, um, yeah, the those were the lowest bids that were returned for, for each um, electrical, general construction, and plumbing. Do, do these contracts have but performance guarantees in town? Um, Sorry about that. I believe so, Allison. Yes. It, it's not, it's uh, they have to produce what what we, we have a construction manager and so at the end of the period when it's finished constructing there'll be a sign off by the engineer of record and and the vendor well, and I'm just looking for cost creep opportunities or cost creeping in no no once they put the for prices we didn't put any uh, variables into okay. the contract would this project be done by next summer that's, that's, that's the goal. Yeah, it would have to be done. Uh, it, it's currently written as having to be completed by May 15th. Okay. Um, I have a question. I think it's for you, Len. Um, you mentioned the capital plan. Um, I wonder publicly here um, how this would affect other projects in the town. And I think that's a policy decision so for the board. It's, it's a question like if we add a million to this, do we have to subtract a million somewhere else? Right. And I don't know where that somewhere else is. Um, if, we are, like, if it is at all. We're about to, you know, we're getting the budget, what, soon? Was it next Tuesday? Week. Like next week. And that and includes are, a capital we plan? We are proposing to yes. reduce the amount of town indebtedness significantly, you know, by retiring quite a bit of debt. Um, so... Yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the debt side of our... Finances. Are we going to be replacing it in kind, or is it going to be still netted out? N net lower. Because okay. we'll be I know it's going to jump. It has jumped over the years. Well, some of it's CPF, so, you know, but yeah. we are reducing the overall indebtedness that the town has by a significant amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's some other debt that can, is callable next year that I'm going to come back yeah. to you with. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch of moving parts that can save us a bunch of money. Callable, meaning bonds that, that we have out that we can pay off with using general funds or other? Well, or refinance, okay. uh, like, a, like a refinance, like a, and those are more uh, general obligation bonds for the, for the operating funds not just the CPF fund CPF fund we came up with a plan we were going to call in about 22 million dollars mm -hmm. where the bonds come January and uh, April of next year uh, so that's that's in motion and that's going to save us a whole bunch of money but then there's also some other general obligation bonds that we had issued uh, now it's nine years but it will be ten years because they're not callable until ten years and they'll be due next year too and depending on where interest rates are. It might go away from us, but if they're better, we'll refinance them, and then we'll save some so, money. Yeah, there's policy decisions ahead. There's other capital projects that we're doing, the town hall, heating and air conditioning. You know, at some point, the justice court is going to have to get replaced. There are things down the road that, mm -hmm. you know, infrastructure we have to maintain. I, I look at the beach pavilion and think, you know, that's something that everybody uses. That's something that will strength and property values in that whole Hampton Bays region as well as elsewhere. So I, like, to me, it's a good investment in terms of how it's going to affect taxpayers. You know, I, I, I'm not anticipating there'll be any tax increases associated with it because of the way the town has been growing and the revenues are growing that we should be able to, uh, you know, manage that debt service. So, you know, 
things that increase property values also so increase I'm, I'm hearing that it may town. not affect any other projects in the town and that's that's important I, I'm well. not seeing that we'll have to not do a project mm -hmm. if we put additional million dollars here I, I don't think so but that's really a board policy decision right well but the decision is based on the question and it's a legitimate no it's great it's an excellent question or to do this is something going to suffer um, and I follow the plan. I like the plan. I think EPA is the right choice on the deck. I think, you know, the, the heart pine, you, you know, all of those things are fantastic. The roof that was chosen on the board here. Yeah, you great. know, what's now after we do this? And I, I do believe know. in investing in facilities. Yeah. That part is important to me. We'll be putting camera systems out here, too, and mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of... No, it will set the standard, and this is both a positive and a negative. Once this beach is done, <laughs> everybody's going to want to have a facility like this. Um, but it would be nice to have at least one, you know, first-class beach facility. Okay. And so we'll be seeing the capital plan with the budget when, the, when you yeah, unveil your budget. Yes, okay. it's, we're finishing it now. It's in print. It's just... He's going to present it, I think, next week, next Thursday. Next Thursday, yeah. Next Thursday. Thursday or Tuesday? Thursday? Thursday. You, Thursday. Thursday. I thought it was Tuesday. Thursday? At least on my calendar. That's when I hand them the budget? It's Thursday? Okay. Yes. So we're doing it at a work session or a special meeting? And Len's going special to town board meeting. We're doing a special town board meeting for yeah, Thursday? On Thursday, yeah, I think. Yeah. So I can hand everybody the budget. All right. Go to the ceremony. Well, they already took my budget. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. so so board, uh, and this is a work session. Where this is we're supposed to have this interactive process here. Um, are we willing to do this? I mean, do, where should I, I think we should? I don't think we should abandon this project. The community's got their hearts in it. Um, I think it's uh, going to be a, a really nice improvement. It's a really popular beach. It's a wide beach. A it's run down, okay, and. Uh, it is, you know, 30% more than we anticipated. Everything is, seems to be coming in high right now for lots of different reasons. But I, I, I think that waiting isn't the right thing either. It's likely to get higher. And I think we can do it uh, based on my understanding of the, of the budget. I think that this is something that we could uh, invest in this pavilion. And, um, I think we'll, we'll be glad we did. So I'm going to support the additional $1.2 million, but uh, I'd like to hear from everybody. Julie, I'll start with you. Um, I agree with you. I think financially, according to Len, it's doable. Um, won't be a huge negative impact on our taxpayers. Um, I think it's going to be a boon. I think a beautiful new beach pavilion is going to attract more people, and we can offset, you know, so we'll be making more revenue. Um, and it definitely needs a rehab. Well, I'll support as well. How it currently looks. The before and after. All right, uh, Christine. I, I anticipate supporting it. I think obviously it does need rehabilitation. That gets more costly the more we tend to not do it. Um, the community. Ha this is something that they have, you know, very much supported and want to see move forward. Um, and I'd like to see it move forward for several reasons. The least of which is that we're going to attract more people because I think it already attracts a lot of people, but it'll still be. Um, a flagship, but I do, you know, at the same time, and I, I, I'm going to be supporting it, but I do think it's, um, we need to keep in mind the um, list of all of the projects that we have, you know, going on, and I know that, you know, Kristen has been doing an amazing job, but like, we have piled on a significant amount of um, projects uh, in the last two years, and um, our capital program has grown greatly, which is a good thing, because I also believe in investment in facilities. We just need to something's going to give at some point right. um, because not only with the investment in the capital, you know, in the structure that's going to need to be addressed in our operating at some point as well in terms of staffing and maintenance and all the other things that go along with that. So with that in the back of our minds, obviously this is, um, as I already said, something I would support because I think it needs to but, be done. But You know, Lynn, you might be able to give us more information too, maybe, maybe not today, but you know, as the years go on and we have to fix our infrastructure, we are also retiring old debt that was used to build some of this infrastructure. So we're no longer having to carry debt service on older projects. So we're retiring debt and we're adding debt. The stuff that we're retiring now, the, the infrastructure is 30 years old. We haven't, 
The problem with the town, as I saw it coming in here when I started a bunch of years ago, was you, you never kept up keeping up with stuff. Mm -hmm. So you had all of this so my, the, my little point, dilapidated. My point is, though, as we add new debt, we are also eliminating old debt. There are some oh, projects yeah, no, that, that you know maybe had a twenty-year lifespan. You have a lot of growing things. You have a growing town. You have growing needs. You have gro you know, this is not a stagnant town. It's growing. No, we have. I mean, the senior no, but it would be good to see what are overall your budget, your, budget, your budget is going to have many charts regarding the debt. Over the five right. years. The, the, bond, the bonded indebtedness will then reflect the things we're retiring as well as the things that we're adding but to that, it. Absolutely. But that project plan, I don't think, includes all of the things that we've all been working on, too. So we're going to have to consider that in the context of those, like Ludlam Avenue and the, those. Well, you're going to have areas. a lot of pipeline projects right. that you have that need to be explored, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. You, <laughs> are you going to continue to pull the, yes. the board? Yes, I'm going to continue yeah. on. All right, so Councilman <laughs> Bouvier, who's obviously wants to say something, dying to, <laughs> dying to weigh in. Just jump in, John. Well, uh, the, the financials aside, uh, I totally agree with you. We have a lot of decaying infrastructure here. So, in my mind, I make the separation between what we need and what we want. And I think there's a big difference. Uh, we have a lot of projects of what we want, um, but this is a need, in my view. This is an absolute need. This structure hasn't been, it was built in the 60s, there's been very little done to it. Uh, it, it is the flagship of our beaches. It's important to our economy. So it makes absolutely perfect sense to do that. However, on the other hand, we have these other want projects that I think are part of that equation too that, that we need to discuss. The needs are infrastructure without a doubt. We're, we're in this building. We're making a big investment in this building. We have court systems. We have all these things that are incredibly important to work on. Christine Scalera and I are liaisons to the capital projects in parks, and I know you're being burdened with a lot, and we're, I think we're both really cognizant of that. And, uh, uh, we're in financial, financially, it seems like the town is, is doing well, and we have these opportunities to do that, but I, I can't see having already made an investment in this important infrastructure project that we're not going to continue that investment and find, find a way to make it happen. So I'm absolutely supportive of this. Uh, but I do want to add the caveat that there are the, the need projects and the want projects, and we need to make that distinction. All right, Tommy John, your turn. I was uh, at the Beach Pavilion this summer, and I inspected it, you know, take a look, walk around, take a look at the deck. Um, and uh, it's going to need to be replaced, and it's not just a question of if, it's, it's when. And so, um, so long as we have uh, room in our debt service, that this isn't going to increase and significantly affect other projects that we want to do in the town, then, then yes, I, I would support it. And I do believe in investing in infrastructure. I believe it's good for the local economy. And, um, and this would be our flagship beach. You know, it's kind of like buying a new pair of sneakers. You know, you realize how old your other pairs are, you know, like, and this, I think, Okay, bad analogy, but uh, <laughs> this will, uh, when we compare this new beach to our others, we're probably going to want to be improving those as well. That, yes, yeah, like you were saying before, that's the only problem with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, making something yeah, nice. <laughs> it highlights how not yeah, how you know, my <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's small feet. Well, I think that's our second project. That's a great transition. <laughs> I've talked beach is where we're moving. It's going to be full yeah. the next half hour. Right. So, a bad pun. Nice all right, so. It sounds like all five of us are willing to move forward. It's unfortunate that the costs are going up. And yes, right, to, to finish, I'm willing to move forward on this project. I just don't want to end with the sneaker thing. Um, I think it'll you want, certainly benefit. You want to, you want to run forward. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, this is going to be a half hour of bad puns. Jump forward. It's not going to stop. Heal it, would you? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, um, thank you for your consideration and support of the Hong Kong project. Um, we do look forward to moving forward with that. Um, so thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, Hot Dog Beach is the other project we wanted to speak with you about today. Um, this project is, um, is everybody familiar with the location of Hot Dog Beach? It's on June Road, um, a little bit west of uh, our Tiana facilities. It was closed for several years. Um, there had originally been a, a, a restaurant there that had a fire, um, burned down most of the, the facilities there. Um, then CPF had bought it, I believe, in 2001, and it's been um, gated and locked for several years and, um, until last summer was the first summer we reopened it. 
So there's currently two walkovers to access the ocean. One of them is in total disrepair and has been just um, fenced off. So we've been allowing for use of the one that is more eastern located. It has become one of our most popular beach facilities within a two-year period. We had um, a food contract with a mobile uh, taco truck this summer, um, Triton, which is the access road uh, immediately to the east of it, you know, was packed as well. So, um, you know, it's a really, um, <laughs> a, a really popular facility and we want to see it, you know, improved in good shape and safer for our um, beach covers. A lot of families out there this year. Yes, a lot of families, a lot of surfers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was really... There was like a sandbar or something actually. creating there's a, a, a sound, good yeah. There's a sandbar in that I area. was there a lot this summer. It was, I, I love it. It's perfect. Well, yeah, that I think... Except for access. Like. Yeah, <laughs> the, I, the, the food truck I think really made a difference. Like, so once you can like spend the day on the beach, come up and you know have buy a bottle of water or a taco or whatever, it's... It makes it just a, a, a more enjoyable recreational day. So. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice walk. Yeah, people have been talking about the taco truck. And so, yeah, I think just everything about it, people are really enjoying the beachfront there. And um, it's a little off the beaten path. So we've been working with um, McLean to redesign the walkover access. And there would actually be a little deck um, up top connecting those two access points so you can see that in this drawing here so we've been working with Mary this um, is a CPF project right? it's it's a combination of town funding CPF funding and CDBG funding okay um, CDBG funding would pay for that um, handicap concrete access um, parking pad that you see in the rendering there she's um, CDBG is also helping with um, some costs related to the ADA access ramp and railings. Um, so this project is, um, this one came in about $40,000 over budget with the, um, the bids that we received back. And then about additional 30,000 for the um, inspection services we're gonna need okay. during the course of the project. Um, in speaking with Mary, she has, uh, been able to find money to cover that difference um, due to some money that was freed up some other projects. The full 70 on. or the? Yes. So um, we are looking to put a resolution on to, uh, I believe, to amend Mary's budget to free up that money, put it into the project, and um, move forth with awarding the work to the contractor. Um, this could get also done by next summer? By the end of this year. By the end of this year. Correct. Wonderful. <laughs> Even better. Yes. <laughs> um, so now, is this very similar to what was there in terms of design, or it's kind of more of a, it's well, a different design? Well, this is what's connected. currently there. Um, the switchback is being moved a little bit further south from where it had been. But other than that, um, the layout of the, the walkovers is staying the same. They didn't have the deck though, right? And there was right. not a deck platform, right? So we're creating a deck platform up top so people can, we'll put a couple of picnic tables, people could go up the ADA access ramp, right. sit up top on the deck. Um, it's pretty rickety could, right now. I, I yeah, that. the, well, the one is totally right. What happens, inaccessible I mean, this is, this is kind of, this is great, four handicapped spaces, five handicapped spaces. Five. Five handed, so if you're in a, a wheelchair and you go up the ramp and you go down the walk boardwalk, what happens at the end of the boardwalk? Is there a way to get onto the beach? It's pretty steep right now, um, just from the way that the dunes are formed. Um, can we do one of those mats like we do elsewhere? We where you can could... for to get sure, down. but I do think it, I mean, it changes a little bit year to year, but I do think it would probably be. A, a, a slope that wouldn't be safe for yeah right now it's pretty, it, is, yeah. it is but it does change it does yeah. change so but I know but we're making this a really accessible beach by design with five handicapped spaces and this great ramp all the way down to the beach you want to then be able to get people from the end of the ramp onto the beach so otherwise I think we'd be criticized for having spent all this money to create all this access that's not really usable um, is what would it take to get 
I don't know, so a little more sand there or, or some matting that you could take the wheelchair a little further out? Um, I'd have to investigate that with our consultant. Um, Is that something CDBG money could cover, that piece of it? The accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. Yeah. If it's involving accessibility. It right. Maybe you could look into that last, you know, 50 feet or something. Well, it could just be more more wooden walkway, you know, that would not change because you can't put something that doesn't, that changes all the time and say you're going to give access. It'd have to be something the that only, would actually give well, sometimes access. Sometimes we do the these mats, right? Yeah, these yeah, yeah but it's, it's the, the mat, it's the, the grade. It's getting right, the grade. Yeah, it gets it's too always low. changing. I have yeah. seen some, uh, I think it was a beach in California where they had, where are you they actually had, uh, it was a cantilever system. It's it south of the, uh, so south so how do you get from getting, the deck? We're, we're getting people to here. Which is a deck, uh, an elevated deck. How do you get them down The elevated deck is here. So if you're in a wheelchair, you're coming in this way, you're going, up the ramp, right. getting onto this, all the way down to there. Right. Then what's the drop But you still can't on? get to the beach. That's the problem. It's a pretty significant. It's like feet. So it's, if you increase the ramp uh, length, it's just feet. the degree of the slope. So uh, so you'd you'd here's your exit. Outside. This part here. Yeah, you'd have if to probably. If we could build up some sand, another switch back. Another switch back. Right. You need it. It would be very difficult. I think it would be a DEC permitting and. Do we have stairs that go down for? Pedestrians like just walking? They are there, but they're they buried by the dunes. So, I mean, I love this project. I think it's great. And I think we should do it, but I do think we need to, you know, right. consider that. To care. consider that last section. So, if you're somebody in a wheelchair, that you can actually get onto the beach. That could be a future project with future funding. Uh, I would to find I would out. Cut down the parking spaces what it will. Yeah. until you build that. No, the, and the, no, no. one of the problems is that we'll it's very it dynamic, that we're so do you don't it. want to make an investment and lose yeah. it because of a winter storm either. Right. I mean, and the stairs right now are buried under sand. They, they used to go down farther. It used to be more of a yeah. slope. Just, I, it needs right. some consideration. I'd like to, I don't want to hold this up. I'd like to move forward, but Diana, if you could start working on that last piece. It's only money. In designing it. And it's, but, <laughs> but CD, we have grant money available for Not this. Not right now. I mean, we're pretty spent That's out. So maybe it it's something we add on year. next year or something. It would be a future, depending on what it is, you know, we're all... I mean, once we build it... I'm like, yeah, it. you would likely need additional permitting yes. because yes. you would be you're in the closer, user. Yeah, to the... Right. So now you're... So talking. look at it and get back to us soon. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, you know, maybe is it a way to... Can we just build sand up so it's not as steep or is... Um, I think it would just... You would need permitting from DEC for sure. If we didn't make these improvements, do you think that the town would be um, facing, a, I don't know, a legal exposure? People walking on it, rickety, they might get hurt. Hey. I mean, if we leave it the way it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. No this, I'm not sure. There's fire damage to it currently. Yes, it, this was from the fire damage of the restaurant in the late 90s. But we're fixing and nothing it so had been done since then. We're right. fixing so you it can't even use the switchback now at no. all? No. No, it's so completely closed. Okay, those are closed. It's, yeah, it's pretty. So yeah, the answer, Tommy John, is right. yeah, you, got, you have problems. It's, some of it's not usable now this because of fire damage. This also would give you the access if the town ever, the thought had also been about making this perhaps the next lifeguarded and attended beach. Okay. And, and you can do daily. This is like the first step in, in being able to build out this larger deck structure so the blue okay. would indicate like a phase two so you would want that ada access um you know in, in looking forth to the future as well hmm. okay well i look i think we should move forward you know the, the funding is available through cpf i mean a lot of it is just um securing the walkovers um so, we're not, so I think on Tuesday's meeting, there's also some resolutions for this project. Yeah, so this to me is a, this is an easy lift. So, all right, uh, Julie, you okay with this? Yes, sir. John? I am. Tommy John? How much are we talking about? Um, the final cost. Do you have that up? 70, so 70, 70. You said 70. Well, the yeah. shortfall is $70,000. Well, it's a project. So it's, um, oh, I believe the town funded $90,000 of it with town money. The um, CDBG is giving $105,000 and um, CPF is giving about, I think it's about $300,000. So this, the, 
major part of it is being funded through CDBG and CPF. All right. Okay. Thank and you. And this shortfall is to be covered by CPF. Yes. For this current, yeah, yeah. to cover the additional seventy thousand. Yeah. All right. So you'll bring us the appropriate resolution. So. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you. All right, so why don't we go to the uh, upcoming agenda. This would be for the September 25th. No. Yes. Is that? Today's the 20th. Today's the 20th. Why do I feel like I said today was the Because you did. The but that's because you were reading that. That's why. Ah. Nobody caught that earlier? Yeah, we did. We just didn't want we to discuss it. Nobody wanted to say <laughs> something. We just went with but it. But now that you brought it up. We figured everyone will figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wait a second. <laughs> When I called the meeting to order, I said the 25th, not yes. the 20th. So how do I the fix that? Session. Okay. Can we please correct that? It's the Today's meeting is the 20th work session on the 20th of September. <laughs> Was that? Can we edit that, Charlie? It sounded like the 20th. So, oh, the 20th. Yeah. 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 Well, we see that works out. All right, yeah. perfect. So this conversation is like the 25th the of the meeting. Voice of God, I said it's okay. <laughs> Okay. Do a little video editing. <laughs> okay, so this is the meeting of the 25th of September, and it will be here at Town Hall at 6 p.m. It's an evening meeting, and we have uh, two public hearings. The first hearing is uh, for the proposed uh, recipients of the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program. And then there's a public hearing to consider the acquisition of property located at 20 Shinnecock Road, Hampton Bays, for the purposes of community development. That's that, the Bell Air Motel property. And then we get to town board resolution. So, Christine, yours is the first. Yeah. 30116 is a 2018 Flanders Riverside Northampton Community Association Hamlet Services Challenge Grant. Tommy John? Town Board Resolution 30164 is to authorize purchase and installation of fencing from Suffolk County contract with residential fences. And remember, Board, if you have questions as we go through this, just feel free to ask them. That's why we, we do this. 30169, authorize purchase and installation of new electrical service from Suffolk County contract with All Service Electric, Inc. 30165, authorizes supervisor to sign contract extension with G&M Dej Inc. for vehicle fuel management system maintenance and installation. 30180 authorizes supervisor to sign contract extension for private or municipal markets for the disposal of recycling and disposal and recycling of services. Is this a departure from our usual? So let's see. Uh, Actually, it's contract extension, so I'll assume that. Yeah, they expired. Uh, they, the Director of Municipal Works is recommending an extension of these contracts okay. from September 2nd, 18 to September 2nd, 19th. It's a one-year extension. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Various recyclables. 30176, right. authorizes the supervisor to execute 2018 summer instructor contracts for parks programs. Town Board Resolution ID 30166 authorizes the supervisor to execute an amendment to contract with the Rainer Group PE and LSBLLC for land surveying, mapping, and engineering services to be provided for Meadowlark Lane road improvements in Bridgehampton. 30181 authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract with LK McLean Associates PC for, for, for professional services to be provided for Hot Dog Beach facility rehabilitation. And actually, I'd, I'd like to be added as co sponsor to that. Sure. I don't know. I don't think that's the one we were just talking about, though. No. But, but yeah. yeah. That's 30181, mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, 30182 is an authorization for the supervisor to sign a contract with LK McLean Associates PC for professional services to be provided for Ponquag Beach redevelopment of the Beach Pavilion. So these are for construction inspection services. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and there are a couple of Scrivener's errors in there that have already been taken care of with the clerk's office. Yeah. Is that normal that we do 
construction inspection. I mean, normally have an engineer assigned to the job. So this is on top of the regular engineering, I guess? Yeah, they said yes, they, had, they had spe specific things that they needed to hmm. have covered and looked up. Okay. Uh, 30163 awards an authorized supervisor to sign a contract with Fisher Signs and Shirts to provide various signs to the town. Uh, on the motion, what kind of signs? I'm just curious. I'm looking. There is. And how much is it? It was bid. It was four bids. Yeah. Shall not exceed individual budgets. So I guess the various contract, the various departments have budgeting for signs. And shirts. And shirts, yeah. Okay, I'm not told. The it's board. it's always it's, so it's not a, it's no purchase order shall be created and no payment shall be made without fully executed contract. Uh, the source of funding for this project, uh, the various accounts, not to exceed individual budgets. So it just it's budgeted amounts for these things. Just okay. you, I guess they won the contract. Uh, Christine, you're the next one. Three zero one seven eight awards and authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract, Hot Dog Beach Facility Rehabilitation with J N S Contracting. Resolution 3014 awards and authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract for Ponquad Beach redevelopment of Beach Pavilion with construction consultants for the general construction, New York Trenches. Is that right? Trenchless. Trenchless, Trenchless sorry. Trenchless. New York Trenchless for the electric and plumb well services for the plumbing portion of the Ponquad Beach redevelopment of Beach Pavilion. And John, you want to co-sponsor that one? Is it? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I, the only reason the other one is because it's touching on uh, municipal works as well. So I just want to. Okay. Three zero one six. Did you want to go on? No, oh, that's fine. That's yep, fine. That would be great. Thanks. Send it together. Mm -hmm. Three zero one six seven recalls and rescinds town board resolution twenty eighteen seven sixty seven to sign a contract with Suffolk County Water Authority to connect public water at Paxaba Golf Course. Yeah, so I sort of can't explain that. Um, so our restaurant at Poxabog is on well water. We have tested it. There are no detections of those perfluorinated compounds. Um, uh, though I think long term we would like to see it connected to public water. Um, meanwhile, we are working to install a POET system. So we are going to do a, uh, it's a, it's a lot cheaper. This, we had hoped that we would be able to use some of the water quality money, the CPF water quality money to extend the main. That's the big cost. That's the, I think $100,000 to get the main there. Um, that has not yet been signed by the government. Um, and there are some questions of whether, even if it is signed, whether... You mean the amendment to the legislation? The amendment, Correct. yes. Right. So I don't even know if it's even gone to the, I, gov yeah. the governor. No, so, yeah, I think it hasn't even gone to the governor's desk yet. Um, and then when it does, and assuming it gets signed, it's not clear yet whether this property will qualify because there's no contamination at this site for that. So we're trying to be preemptive. So I think for now to spend a few thousand dollars on putting a poet system in, because we do have you know patrons, the public uses the, the restaurant, just to err on the side of caution to have the poet system put in. And uh, we'll continue to monitor the water quality at the restaurant at Poxabog. And uh, maybe one day we will bring public water down to it when, it, when it's uh, economically feasible. Yeah, Frank's been working on this, so yeah. For the board's information, Jay, oh, two things. One, the total cost of the project would also include extending the main and then connecting from the main to the building. So you're talking about $125,000 approximately. That this is the connection to the water. If district. we're going to use To go out to water. public water at this uh, moment. I've been in conversation with the Suffolk County Health Department and the DEC, and because it is a publicly owned facility that serves the public, they are considering whether or not the DEC would install the POET system, which would result in no cost to the town. Uh, they didn't hang up the phone on me, so that's a good sign. 
so they're taking that under consideration. There would be a cost of in the neighborhood of four or five thousand dollars for a poet system and annual uh, maintenance. quarterly maintenance on the system. Uh, but the DEC and the health department are considering, because of it's a public facility and it's open 24 or 12 months a year, and it does serve the public, even with no detects, they might be willing to support installing the system at the DEC's cost for installation and ongoing maintenance, which would be the best outcome. The, the jury's still out in that regard, but mm -hmm. it's important the board, I think, knows that that's a good possibility. Or a yeah, possibility. And it's important to understand that we did recently have that water tested and there are no no detections whatsoever of these chemicals. So. And it's a protocol, as I'm sure the board members know, that uh, restaurants that serve the public have a quarterly uh, water testing for uh, public, you know, public. even privately owned restaurants that serve the public, the health department tests their water quarterly. They don't always test for PFAS, PFOs, but in this case, they, uh, they did because it is in that Wayne Scott yeah. uh, right. survey. It's very area. close to the border with the town of East Hampton. Yeah. It's within, I think, 500 feet, feet of the border. So, uh, and on the border, which is Town Line Road, they now have public water. There's public water near there. That's part of that big uh, East Hampton project. Expansion. Yeah. But it's still, it's a long enough distance that it's it's a little cost prohibitive. Yeah, and the confusion here was that their initial proposal, that's not their initial documentation, only referenced the cost associated with getting from the street to the building, and I think the resolution that you approved was for I'm going to say eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars, which is was the cost of the of, of the connection. They did not include the in the initial contract the cost of getting the main to that location, which added the additional 100000 I think this course of action is wiser for the town ultimately and affords the public the proper protection. Charlie, the mics are a little hot. If nobody else is noticing that, it's kind of feeding back a little bit. If you could turn that down. Uh, okay, thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Uh, okay, thanks, Charlie. Okay. Uh, town board resolution. Go ahead, Tom. Jeff. Yeah. Town board resolution. 313168 to rescind the town board resolution 2018 769 authorizing the purchase of a 2018 Ford F 150 from Great Neck Ford LLC DBA Tower Ford. Thank you. 30172 rescinds town board resolution 2018 785 authorizing the purchase of a 2018 Ford F 150 from Webster Ford Inc. I guess we're switching these to state mm -hmm. contracts. Maybe we got a uh, a lower number. Let me see. Uh, it says the Ford can't. Is it the order? Mm -hmm. oh, it was off of New York State, but uh, I guess they Looks the contract like the, the, the vendor the cannot way. accept it. All right, uh, so well, I guess we'll have to figure out how we're going to get those. Uh, the next, next one, one you got them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, here we are. Vendor. There you go. 303. <laughs> yes, they what figured you it do out. Like that. <laughs> it's amazing. 30173 resolution, resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2019 Ford F150. <laughs> All right. And uh, there's the other one 30179. A resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2019 Ford F-150 for the Community Preservation Department. Town Board Resolution 30155, uh, 2018 notice to bidders for demolition at 18 South Crestview Drive in Remsenburg. Uh, 30170 is the bond authorization for the Ponquag Bathing Facility. Discussed uh, 30157 amends the 2018 adopted budget for various departments. 30132 amends the 2018 adopted capital budget for Hot Dog Beach. 30134 amends the 2018 adopted capital budget for the Ponquag Bathing Facility. 30154 amends the 18 capital budget and CPF Hot Dog Beach access ramp. 
Uh, Town Board Resolution ID 30129, uh, co-sponsored with Councilwoman Lofstad, to authorize the budget modification to the Community Development Block Grant Program for fiscal years 2017. Resolution 30139, appoint Trails Advisory Board for 2018. Town Board Resolution 30171 to recall and rescind the resolution 2018-875, accepting the resignation of members from the Southampton Arts and Cultural Committee. So they, this, Tommy John, this is basically um, that there were two members, uh, Dorothy Lichtenstein and where's the other, Brenda? Brenda Simmons. Brenda Simmons, yeah. So um, we, we're, they're, they're going to stay on the committee then. Yes. Well, one person really is not on the committee, so it's hard to accept her resignation if she's not on the committee. Okay. So what? So this doesn't put them auto This doesn't put both of them automatically back on, right? No, now. it's just rescinding uh, resignations. Okay. Um, and the then committee. we. And that's the only part is rescinding, because there was we also added a few members at that during this. We I think in one resolution took two members off and added like four or five members on or was that a it, those were different resolutions oh, they were. if I recall okay this was okay this was just a resolution that had accepted the resol uh, the resignations all right, right. Um, three and, and they do support the arts and the cultural committee it's just it was a question of the time okay so um, 30140 authorizes the town attorney to reimburse Nimer. that's the New York municipal insurance reciprocal the deductible for a claim paid on behalf of the town. 30162 accepts a donation of interpretive signage from the Hampton Bays Rotary Club for the Edward J. Warner Jr. Senior, senior, junior, senior, senior. Old Ponquag Bridge Marina Park. So thank you. Okay, uh, 3011 authorizes Community Preservation Fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyer's exemption for Tatiana Fros and Rogerio Fros Silva. 30160 is a waiver of a portion of the showmobile fees for the San Gennaro Fest of the Hamptons. Town Board Resolution. Can I, can I co sponsor that one? Sure. Too? Town Board Resolution 30131. This is the 2018 Manufactured Home Community License. 29515 abolishes civil service position. This is sponsored with uh, Councilman Bouvier, Councilman Lofted, and Councilman Schiavone. Everybody but me. What, what, what? <laughs> uh, we were Not my doing. Don't know where it came from. Uh, yeah, me either. Uh, the following competitive position. Did you want to say anything, Jim? It was just a reorganization of the, oh, yes. the code enforcement division. Okay. okay. All right. Three. Sorry, you want to add yourself? Oh, no, yourself? no I think that's. <laughs> nope. No. Um, I'll okay. leave just the four of you. 30124 accepts resignation of a, an office application specialist. Um, 30123 accepts resignation of a construction equipment operator. 30104 accepts retirement of James McGooey, assessment can, aid in assessor's office. Yeah. Can I just go back? Because I'm on as a, one of the sponsors, but I wasn't. We talked about doing this, but we also talked about because I'm really, I have a problem with reducing staff and code enforcement. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we're going to be taking out that one position, my understanding is we were going to be putting in so that we could get somebody under them. So I want to make yeah. sure that okay. that position. Yeah. Right. It was actually, uh, since that time, that we did hire somebody under them, a new, a new code enforcement officer. I think so. Right, but yeah. are we, are we so, short yeah. a down one then? Down no, position? No, because they did hire. So well, here's Russell. That, yeah, that, Russ. I agree with that. I, that was my understanding as well. Yeah, they did hire. They, yeah. Yeah. Talking so, about so the 29515 abolishing civil service position. This is in the ordinance enforcement, the senior town investigator. And we talked about taking Which is actually out. under, under no, this, attorney, so. We did add one. This, this resolution um, was supposed to be a walk-on back in July when we... And so it's housekeeping. It's just housekeeping. Yeah. I don't want to reduce yeah. the staffing there. I mean, that no. was the intention. Okay. This is done. So we added the position, but we never passed the resolution to abolish it. It okay. was supposed to be abolish walked it. on that night, and it did not get walked on. Okay. That's all. Thank you. All 
Okay. Um, so one, I think I, I was. I think we uh, three four. zero one zero four accepts retirement of James McGuey, assistant aide in assessor's office. Three zero one three five authorizes GIS manager to attend the New York State Geospatial 2018 Summit. Sounds pretty cool. Yes. 30136 authorizes town management services administrator to attend the Association of Governmental Risk Pools, uh, AGRIP, Fall Education Forum. 30084 uh, terminates employment of an automotive mechanic two. 30133 notice of public hearing to consider amending town code 10 5 as it relates to the procedure for capital program amendments. I think we may have talked about that. Is this is when we had the work session with Katie. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 30137 is a notice of public hearing on the acquisition of a restrictive use easement and historic preservation easement on property located at 90 Main Street, Sag Harbor, and amends the Community Preservation Project Plan and the CPF Management and Stewardship Plan to include that property. So this is the Sag Harbor Cinema. Uh, we, you know, with this public hearing, are entertaining the idea of purchasing certain development rights, commercial rights over that building, restrict, restricting it to community use, uh, as well as uh, restricting some of the fares or fees, uh, ticket prices that can be charged. Um, this is a, potentially an important step in the revitalization or recreation of that Sag Harbor Cinema. And I welcome co-sponsors if people want to join in on this. I would like to co-sponsor that. Does this include the facade easement as well? Yes. Yeah. That's it. it includes the facade easement as well. Okay. It will always be a cinema. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it always look the same from the street, and it will always be a community cinema. So they'd be selling some of the commercial rights to do other things there, like mini malls. And, and affordable. Mm -hmm. Yes, and affordable. Yeah. Um, 30161 is, uh, assumes lead agency for the purchase Purpose of secret review for the change of zone application entitled Five Cedar Lane LLC, requesting a change from residential R40 to Hamlet Commercial Residential HC Noyak. That um, it's got to be Cromer's Market. Yep. Mm -hmm. And is there so we've talked there? about this. We had a work session on this. So um, this resolution is just to, to take lead agency on it. Uh, 30175, reestablish re lead agency for preparation of a supplemental generic environmental impact statement, SGIS, for the Hampton Bays Downtown Overlay District in the Hampton Bays. And uh, you should have some additions. This should be another little smaller packet. Uh, John, you had the first on that. Yeah. It was Town Board Resolution ID 30177, Notice of Public Hearing to Consider Community Preservation Fund CPF Water Quality Improvement Projects uh, through the WQIP proposed for Round 1 2018 funding. So this is the first group of projects that have been reviewed by our Water Quality Board and that will be presented to you. And you'll also note in here that there's uh, there, there will be, these were televised, the original applications with the applicants so the board to have an opportunity to look at those uh, prior to this public hearing and then uh, uh, you'll you'll be presented with five of the five applications uh, for funding or six I'm sorry six will we be um, choosing from the six or prioritizing them or it's just on these together? are the ones that are recommended Aggregate. together okay. and you can you know and the funding's there yeah and, and oh, in the resolution you'll see the links to the the televised uh, right but we've got to be able to see the ones that didn't get recommended that proposed in this case uh, they were all recommended but okay in the future you we're, we're uh, working up a right, so everybody who applied to make so that a little all easier. these are recommended do we have I don't see it here what the Financial the costs are that that's that will be presented in public hearing 
Okay. Okay, because we do have obviously a limitation of that twenty percent. And you guys will all get a, a sheet with a, a fact sheet with all the information about and, it. And we want to, you know, I, I need to review them in the context of how much money we're allotting for our uh, uh, rebate program, our IA rebate program. That uh, that there's added, you know, should we decide, let's say, to fund all of these? Well, uh, as you can imagine, there have been some just a lot of discussions over the last few days for exactly that. So you'll have all that opportunity to do that. This is just the notice of public hearing for it. And these would be projects that would start in 2019, or are some of them slated for later, a multifaceted, like multifaced? Well, I, I'm not part of that process, obviously, okay, because okay. I'm at the other right, right, end right. of it too. I make okay. those, you know, decisions with you guys. So you'll be presented from planning and okay. from we'll the CPF uh, director. Okay, and and the hearing was was public and it's it's on channel 22 and, and we can get it and some of them are one shot deals and some of them are multifaceted. And you'll you you'll have the links to that so you can go see them. All right. Mm -hmm. And then resolution ID blah 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 three zero one eight four is to authorize the supervisor to sign a donation agreement with the Boy Scout Troop four eighty three for an open air shelter structure at Squire Town Park. It's an Eagle Scout project. So Thank you, Mr. Martin. That. <laughs> okay. So we'll just be able to find out more. Yeah. Where it's going to go. And... Okay. Uh, I notice a typo in the resolution. It's minor, but in the first whereas, the word, the word Squire Town Park is it's missing an R in Park, Squire Town Pack. They're from Boston. Mm. <laughs> what is it? It's from Boston. That's the way it is. Yeah. It's not a political action. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. It's PAK. Not the right spelling. Okay. Oh, it's to rehabilitate a shelter structure that's already there. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I love, love those Eagle Scout projects. Um, all right. So that's it. Any other questions about the agenda? So we'll add these two to it. Fix the one typo. Um, add a co-sponsor here and there. It. All right, Kim, you got everything. Got it. Yeah. All right. So that's done. So um, before we do executive session, any updates? Um, I guess I can mention a couple things. But we did we did get a report, as you probably read, from the police chief on crime statistics. Uh, year to date, uh, encouraging. So, at all major major crimes are down by 20% from last year, which were down by I think 8% from the year before. So it's a we're we're trending down. it's trending down, and this was a big a big jump downward. Uh, that's positive. It, you know, obviously we're using crime analytics. We're using uh, community policing. A model we're using this uh, problem-oriented policing model, um, engaging the community, um, getting cops out of cars in some cases, uh, walking down towns, and we've increased patrols in certain areas, and uh, it increased communication. And I think it's a combination of a lot of efforts, as well as I think there's a as the economy strengths strength strengthens, crime rates tend to fall too. So there may be some broader trends that we're seeing, but it's uh, certainly encouraging news to, to see major crimes fall by double digits, in this case 20 percent. Um, the budget we talked about earlier, putting the finishing touches on the proposed budget for next year, then it, then it becomes the board's budget. Um, so on next Thursday, next Thursday that'll be presented. Um, I know there was a meeting in Hampton Bays. I was not there on the form-based code. Um, several of you were there. If you don't want to talk about how that went. I think it went really well. The presentation um, that our planning department gave, um, I think it was very detailed. Um, they answered a lot of questions. There was um, comment back and forth from the audience. And I think it was, Tommy John was there as well. I think it was a good meeting, informative. It, it is. And it's the town engaging the community. Um, and, and we heard from the community. Uh, positive uh, you know some questions and and our planners uh, did, a, did a fine job explaining what we are planning on doing in Hampton Bays and you know what the 
purpose of zoning is, right? It is a 10, 15 year plan to, to uh, improve the community in the way they want it to, to go. So I th it was well attended and uh, it was generally good. And I, d I think step. that we'll do more outreach specifically, specifically to the businesses in the area that it may affect, um, perhaps potential de uh, developers, um, so everybody's on the same page and know what's coming down the pike. Okay. Your, your email synopsis was helpful. Oh, too. good. Yeah, okay. you put it together. Excellent. Um, I had a meeting the other day with uh, folks from the animal shelter, the one in Jackson Avenue. They would like to... Uh, build out some additional space about 4,000 square feet for animal training I guess there's a sometimes there's an issue with adoptions and these animals uh, not being acclimated or ready for the home that they're moving into maybe they they don't know how to navigate staircase or uh, haven't been exposed to mirrors or you know, maybe are still having teething issues whatever it might be so or don't know how to jump into a car it's you know so they, they want to have this space where they can do additional training so that when these adoptions do occur, the animals are, are more adjusted and less likely to come back to the shelter. So They're um, also going to be walking the animals in that enclosed area, right? Mm -hmm. So they're that proposing to, this, to do this. That like It's like a $3 million addition. They're going to raise all the money for it. Um, they're not asking us for anything other than the ability to build out kind of within the square that they're already occupying so it's um, we are talking though because they only have two years left under license agreement of ex um, extending that and possibly converting it to a lease so that um, it's easier for them to fundraise if you know people don't want to donate you know thousands of dollars not knowing that if they're going to be there because technically the building belongs to us still would belong to us but if they know that they're going to be there for an extended period of time and, and they do do a wonderful job there so uh, I just wanted to let you know that that uh, you know they're working on a plan we're discussing it uh, with them and we're trying to come up with a proposal that you guys will be able to review and um, I did meet with Steve Troy we talked about uh, where we are with ordinance enforcement and the other functions uh, I've asked the uh, him to come and since he's been here a year now kind of update on the pro progress of ordinance enforcement kind of give us a breakdown of uh, the progress they're making the changes they've they're making uh, how SOS system is working and whatever changes that they're recommending so we will have a work session coming up on ordinance enforcement with that update and uh, I think that's it for now um, Julie do you want to Share anything? I'm good today, thank you. Christine? I'm good. No, John? thanks. I'm good as well. All right, so I would like to uh, go into executive session on confidential legal advice. Uh, the first item uh, relates to the uh, Hampton Bays Water District, and the second item uh, relates to the Long Beach Utility District. Uh, options for funding so um, other than that I'll make a motion to adjourn our work session and go into executive session on those two items second. I have a second second Seconded by councilman Mustad all in favor aye, aye. aye. aye.